Welcome back to Medical Math, and this is our series on um, Intro to Analysis by Maxwell Rosenlich, and we're on to problem 3C. Um, and in this problem, we're showing another set of quality, and um, like always, or like usual, when we're showing set of quality, we're going to show that the left-hand side set is a subset of the right-hand side set, and the right-hand side set is a subset of the left-hand side set. So first, let's show... Let's show that the right-hand side set A union B intersects A union C is a subset of A union B intersect C. And uh, I want to clarify something that I've talked about in previous videos. I want to clarify why I start out with let X be in A union B, this left-hand side set A union B intersect A union C. And... Um, so if I can show that this x must also be an a union b intersect c, then since the only property that I gave this x is that it's in a union b intersect a union c, and since all elements in a union b intersect a union c have this property of being in <laughs> this set a union b intersect a union c, then all the implications that hold for this one particular x hold for all x in this set. A union B intersect A union C. So, if I can show that through this series of implications that that X is in A union B intersect C, then I've shown that all X in A union B intersect A union C is a subset of A union B intersect C. A lot of intersections and unions there, but um, let's, let's, so, oh, and also this, I drew this little uh, picture here to kind of motivate, motivate us in our proof. So, let X be in A union B intersect A union C. Um, so, and that implies that X is in A union B, and X is in A union C. And um, before I go on here, I want to emphasize something about, about all, a property about all X subsets X of S, where S is the universe and X is a subset of S. And for any X and X, for any X and X, X is either X is either in X or it's or not it's rather or X is not not in X. So look at what we can do here. We can say that X back to our proof here, we can say that X is either in A or X is not an A. And X, we're allowed to say that X is an A, X could be an A here, because if X was an A, then, or rather, we, we could say that X is an A because if X is an A union B, then X could be an A. And if X is an A union C, then X could be an A. So if X is an A, it could very well be that X is an A and X is an A. So both of these, these statements hold, thus X is an A union B intersect A union C. And we could also have that x not be an a. So, for instance, suppose that x were not an a, then x must be in b. But if x were not an a over here, if since x must be in a union c also, then x must also be in c. So let me write that down a little bit more rigorously down here. So if x is an a, if x is an a, then this implies that x is in a union B intersect C, and you might be wondering why I can make this uh, this immediate implication, um, but the reason is for any set X, for any X, for any set X, X is a subset of X union Y for any set Y. And the reason is, and it, it might be easy to see here, but the set X union Y is all elements that are in X, all elements that are in Y, and all elements that are in both in X and Y. So X is clearly a subset of this set X union Y. So similarly down here, we can say that A union any other set, if X is an A, then X must also be an A union any other set. So now let's go, so we, we showed that for the case that X is an A, 
we showed that x must also be in A union B units x C. Now all we have to do is say if x is not in A, then we if we can show that x that x must also be in A union B units x C, then we're done. Because there's only two possibilities for x. X is either in A or x is not in A. Obviously there's other possibilities beyond that, but we can say that there's a binary situation here. X is either in A or X is not in A. So if X is not in A, then that implies that X is in B and X is in C. And why, did I, why can I say this? Because if X is not in A, then look at this. Since X must be in A union B and X must be in A union C, then if X is not in A in this first, case, in this first um, half, then x must be in b, because it must be in a union b. And if x is not in a in this second part, second half, then must x must be in c, since it must be in both of these sets, a union b and a union c. So it must be x must be in b and x must be in c, which implies that x is in b intersect c. And by the same reasoning as we used up here, x must be in A union B intersect C. And we've done it. We've shown that no matter what, no matter any x in here, whether x is in A or whether x is not in A, it must be the case that x is in A union B intersect C. So going on to our second part, where we show that A union B intersect C must be a subset of A union B intersect a union C. So let X be in A union B intersect C. So we were only giving this proper this X the property that's A in A union B intersect C. And since all X since all elements in this set have the property that A X that have the property that they are in A union B intersect C. Then if the implications, if we can derive an implication that says that those x's must also be in here, then we're done. Um, so let x be in A union B intersect C. Then that implies that x is in A or x is in B intersect C. Now, let's take the first case. If x is in A, then that implies that x is in A union B and x is in A union C by the same reasoning we used up here, by the same reasoning we used up here where we said that the set x is a subset of x union y. So therefore, any, any element in x, the set x, must also be in x union y. And so taking the second case here, if x is in A in, is in B intersect C, then that implies that X must be in B and X must be in C, which implies that X is in B union A and X is in C union A. And this is the same as, this is the same as saying X is in A union B because A union B is the same as B union A, and X is in A union C. And we're done. We show that both possibilities... Oh, and well, of course, you might be wondering, well, what about the case where X is both in A and B union C? Well, I can say, well, if X is in A and X is in B... Uh, sorry, B intersect C. Remember, because the or implies or both in mathematics. We, the or both is implied. Then, well, if I can say, well, if X is in A and X is in B intersect C, then X must be in A. And which implies that x, which all of these implications hold for a, and or I could I could also say that well if x is both in a and x is in b and c, then then I could say well x is in b and c, and all of these implications hold, and I derive that x is in. I forgot to make the last implication here, but both of these implications x is in a union b intersect. A union C, and this is this uh, this implication down here. X is in. I'll draw a little implication sign here. So yeah, and so we're done. And I just want to review one more time why 
I don't think I was clear in saying th this binary uh, situation here. I, for any X in any set, uni universe S here, it's pretty much like saying it, it's either true or false. So it can't be both true and false. Um, so if, if X, oh, for the purposes of this class, um, that is. So if X could either be an A or X could not be an A. That is, we're, that's the same as saying that X is in A and X or X is in the complement of A. And that's the same as saying that X is in A union, the complement of A. And that's the same as saying, that's the same as saying that X, oh, sorry about that, that X, that's the same as saying that X is in S. Because A union, the complement of A, and let's, let's say that this is A and then our universe is this square here, S, then everything in A and everything not in A makes up the whole universe, S. So we can definitely say that X is either in A or X is in the complement of A. And the union of the two, X union the complement of A, comprises S. And we were allowed to say in this situation that X can be in A union B, or in this situation where X is in A union B and A union C, we were allowed to say that X is an A or X is not an A because X, X could be an A because in this situation, if X, X, let's suppose that we weren't allowed to say that, then, well, I won't say that. Actually, X could certainly be an A because if X, X could be an A intersect A here because X could be an A or B and, and X could be an A or C, and it must be the case that X is both in A union B and A union C. And that we could also have, we're also allowed to say that X is not an A, because X could be in B and not an A, and X could be in C but not an A. And this, this statement here, X is in A union B intersect A union C, still holds true for both of these cases is what I was trying to say.